Welcome Yamhill County to Speaking Frankly. I'm your host Howie Harkema and our tagline is and how we do win. Today I have two great guests with me and we're, our topic is McMinnville Recycled Arts Festival, the inaugural for 2019. And the first person I have um, that's a guest is Beth Rankin, who's the festival coordinator. Beth, welcome. Thank you, Howie. Thank you for being on today. Thank you for inviting us. And I also have Kimberly Morgan, who's one of the artists. Kimberly, nice to have you with us. Nice to be here. Nice to um, do this. Um, so what is the McMinnville Recycled Arts Festival? We are so excited to be doing this. We are presenting a arts fair festival where artists are going to be showing what they make and offering it for sale mm -hmm. items that have been made from reclaimed materials awesome and these are people who do things with wood with metal with fabric with odds and ends that's awesome and who's the sponsor of this and who do the pre proceeds go to um Howie, I am very deeply involved with Zero Waste McMinnville. Yes. And one of the things I do is manage the Facebook page. So I am loading it, and people haven't complained yet about how much I load. <laughs> but um, the same topic may come up several times in the course of a year. The fourth time in about 18 months that the topic of a reclaimed art festival showed up, it went ballistic. Viral, I guess is the word. Yeah. Okay. So I said, hold on, and I went to a Facebook page that advertises to artists about shows. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, we don't have it planned yet. I'm just floating a balloon. Who likes this idea? And within a week, I had 90 names. So, of course, my husband, Graham, um, is involved with Zero Waste also, sure. and he's a woodworker. And we knew of two other people who were our artists mm -hmm. and were willing to be on the committee and we got to work so this is under the aegis of zero waste mcminnville and it is a fundraiser for zero waste mcminnville sure. we also have another uh, equivalent sponsor with the linfield sustainability program um, and they have helped us uh, with the location on the Linfield campus as well as some some people to help So this is a kind of a strange question. So why recycled reclaimed and repurposed items made into artwork? We're a throwaway society <laughs> Howie. Right. I mean um, uh, This sweater was picked up at Goodwill by my daughter for me because she knew oh mommy will like that and that's what some of us do, but some people just throw things away. Sure. Um, there are a lot of artists who are, are not making a lot of money. Let's put it that way. Sure. Starving artists. Starving <laughs> artists. Very common. And finding trash that could work right. is a free resource right. or a very inexpensive resource. Uh, and a lot of people have developed almost their entire art everything they do is through recycled so the term itself recycled is a misnomer here yes. um, recycling means taking an object and making a new object that's from that material like plastic from plastic right okay and that's not what we're having what we're having is reclaimed upcycled sure. repurposed sure but recycled is an easy understandable term and a lot of people know it a lot of people know it and they get the point right yeah so how many artists applied and where were they from? Um, we first we figured out how much room we had um, and it was really funny that we got four more applicants than what we had room for. Mm -hmm. um, and how many did you have room for? We had room for 40 um, and so we had 44 applications. Uh, we went through a jury process. Um, we wanted this to be art there's a lot of beautiful crafts out there. There's no question about it, but there is a nuance, a difference between arts and crafts. And we wanted this to be a higher level with art. So a couple people who had perfectly wonderful things were not accepted into this. Yeah. Um, so talk about the school students 
art displays and oh, who yeah. are they? We wanted to reach out to the kids in town um, because realistically it's what the children learn that's going to make the big difference in changing our throwaway society. Yeah. You and I, Howie, we get it, we try hard. Yep. Okay. Um, but, but the kids. We're not the future. No, the kids are <laughs> learning this. And so we wanted to reach out. We never imagined that we'd be reaching out to elementary. Okay. Okay, we planned on reaching out to Linfield, or the art department, and to the high school, the sure. art department. And uh, the reception there was you know, we're really busy people, and our students are really busy. They have all these other shows. As it is, we are still getting, I think, about four artists from the AP art class at the high school and somewhere I've been hearing five to seven of um, the people in um, fabric, oh, I'm saying it wrong, it's what I call a, a welding shop. Sure, So metal fabrication. Shop. Fabrication, sure. thank you. And um, so we have five to seven of them. Um, at the same time, Zero Waste is, is running Earth Month activities right. and has solicited for uh, children in town to make Earth they related art and bring it to uh, an event that's going to be on the 22nd at um, 22nd, 20th, 20th um, at Allegory from 4 to 8. And it'll be a big celebration and the artwork will be on display there and then also brought over for display at us. But the thing that really surprised me was how Montessori got involved. Okay. Um, I had met at another event where I was working for Zero Waste at uh, a three holer, what a, you know, clear stream sorting station, and I was approached by a gentleman with a bow tie, and he said, "Hi, I'm Miles Davis. I'm the entertainment for the evening." I had just <laughs> read about a new president, Linfield, but I was slow. But I knew Miles Davis had died. But the I thought, trumpeter, Miles. Uh, yeah, Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I would play it, and I go, "I can't wait to hear. This should be a good performance." So he had me figured out, I had him figured out, and of course he introduced himself as the president, the new president of Linfield. Um, we became Facebook friends, and it was a way for me to know what was going on Linfield sure. campus, and uh, he's bringing a lot of art there. And um, uh, sometime later, I was telling him about this festival, and his daughter was sitting there and said, can I draw a picture for it? And I said, yeah, where'd you go to school? And that was all it took. They were going to do an art display, but they are going to have a table of things for sale on the Saturday of the event. That is awesome. We're not letting them come on Friday. They have to go to school. <laughs> so, how many artists were vetted in by your jury? Forty. Forty. And let's talk about some of these artists. And you have a list of some of them, and then Kimberly's going to read off the balance. So... Go ahead. Well, she's going to start. Okay. Okay. Andrea. Andrea Harris. Just the name. Yeah. Beth Rankin. Betty Egerton. Brian Bear. Brian Parks. Carla Fox. Carolyn Woody. Chuck Dolance. Oh. Elsa Dye. Gina Tomlinson. Tomlinson. Graham Rankin, Jane Parsons, Janet Rodicher, Jenny Childs, or Jeannie. So Jenny or Jeannie? I think I, I've been calling her Jenny. Jenny, okay. Until I hear her say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all by email. I got it. <laughs> Jessica Garendale? Garendale, Jim Tucker, Joan Steiner, and John Houston. And Josh Balsh, Julie Wilson, Kate Massey. Uh, actually, she's the teacher at Montessori, so her name's on Perfect. her, but it's the Montessori <laughs> yeah, kids. Yeah, got it. Uh, Kathy Benitez, uh, Kimberly Morgan, uh, Laura Roberts, Marie Peterson, Marion Muldron, Marge Angle, Melody Hansen, Michelle Griffin, uh, Peggy LaPointe, Penelope Bellis, Stacy Silber, Tamara Greitner, Greitner uh, Tess Mattis, Valerie Darling, Valerie Donnelly. We have Valerie D.D. <laughs> um, Will Elk Eikenberry and Zoe Wylachenko. 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 That's it. And these things are, there's jewelry people and they're all different. There's woodworking people and they're all different. 
It's amazing. Yeah, we're going to come to some photos here in a few minutes that we'll be able to describe right. and show some of the wares. Kimberly, um, you brought a couple items, and as one of the vetted artists of this festival, would you like to show um, sure. our viewers? Sure. I call these lightning bugs. They're actually um, plant pokes. The wire would go into your plant or flower bed, in, indoor or outdoor. Right. They do both. They're friendly in both places. They're made out of light bulb to start with. And then they have beads and rhinestones for their nose and so eyes. So cute. And then these are new this year, earrings for their wings. That's awesome. And those actually will hold some of the leaf and the stem up. Yeah, you can. You, yeah. yeah. You could do, use them for that also besides just decoration adding color you know this is another type of a plant poke that i have <laughs> i call these floozy spoons because <laughs> they're kind of floozy like you know yeah floozy like um, yeah there's i start out with a silver serving spoon um and then i add the clay which i form into a face and then i paint it to look all nice and floozy ish and then they use, always have moss for hair and then this is an earring on top and a little charm there and some chain and other types of jewelry, just however it ends up on them, you know, yeah. to, to adorn them. That's but fantastic. And then I have to actually name them all, which I write on the little and which, back of the what's handle. what's the name of this one? This one is Sherry, because they remind me of people. <laughs> of course they do. <laughs> And they're, I they're hope Sherry appreciates it, her yeah. immortality. She her. was actually a, one of my teachers in elementary school. She was a very pretty lady. I thought this spoon was kind of pretty. <laughs> well, it sounds like she falls right into the floozyism of. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I know this is a hard question. Um, so there's a cost involved for the tabletops for the artists. I know you've tried to keep it really low this year. I did. This is an inaugural event, and we really wanted to get off um, on a good foot with excellent artists involved. But we couldn't answer the questions that most artists ask before they get involved in a show for the first time. Sure. How many people come through the door? I don't know. We're going to do our best to get thousands. Sure. But I don't know. And um, how much am I going to make? It depends on how many people come through the door that spend money, you know. <laughs> so what we needed to do is figure out what our, what our basic needs were in terms of budget. Mm -hmm. And between the table um, fees uh, and also some advertising that we did in uh, a brochure, which you're going to explain later, right. um, we were able to pull in over $2,000. And from that, we were able to... to market quite a bit because right. we were gifted quite a bit also. So our table fees are definitely going to be going up next year. We are um, trying to follow the lead of two similar uh, festivals. One's in Vancouver, I believe, and one's in Portland. Mm -hmm. And I honestly haven't been to them because this was not on my radar before. Right. But I will be going this summer. Um, and they are held in the summer. So we don't compete with them. The artists can participate in all um, and we looked at their standards we looked at their table fees and we said okay w this and we appealed to our artists we mm -hmm. said help us get it started and so let's talk about where this is located and what date and what time we are very fortunate one of the aspects here in this town is is locations where is a good place to hold a big event especially this time of year where we're still raining. Sure. You don't know. So I didn't want to have to uh, rent a circus tent type of thing. Never fun. No, well, it's expensive, and that I'd rather spend the money on marketing. So we were very fortunate through the affiliation with the Linfield Sustainability Program that we were able to uh, have the use of the library at Linfield, Nicholson Library. It is a huge room. They call it an alley. It's just... I walk in and I go, oh, it's 100 yards. It's a football field because I was in marching band in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and I know yeah. how to do that. Uh, so it's, short, it's just short of 100 yards. And it's a, a big center area. And in there, there are tables, and we're utilizing the tables. There's some seating areas that are going to be moved out of the way. And we'll have other booths in those, in those sections. 
Um, the library people have been amazing to work with. They say the same about us, which is great. Um, so we're hoping for a potential repeat next year. Of course, there's always a hitch. Librarian is retiring, so we won't have continuity with the same person there. So we're hoping we make a good impression and she writes a good report. But um, it's a fantastic venue. It's wood and a lot of windows and light. Uh, we don't have to worry about the weather. There's parking right outside the door for people who are coming to shop. Um, it's very important, and we will stress this again, that people enter the Linfield campus from the light at Albertsons. That's Keck Drive. Do not go in the main gate at Linfield. You will zigzag around the campus and probably never find the library. Right. There's also going to be a lot of people on campus. It's Parents Weekend, which was another reason <laughs> why we chose this weekend. Oh, we have an intern at Zero Waste who said, oh, do it on Parents Weekend. We always run out of things to do, and shopping's fun with our parents. And we said, yeah, shopping's fun <laughs> here, too. Yeah. So it's at the Nicholson Library at Linfield College. From 10 to 4. On? Uh, Friday and Saturday, April 26th and 27th. And the time? 10 to 4. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You always need to reiterate the time frame. We'll do it again. <laughs> and, and I think she has that on a poster that okay, will great. come up at the very end as well. Um, so the proceeds go to the artist and Zero Waste? Well, sure. The artists are earning their money. Right. And after we've paid all our bills, Zero Waste will get what's left over. And we're we're going to be able to give us some, even this first year. We'll be able to give Zero Waste a bit of money. Awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. So what is the recycled artwork cost range to purchase these items? Well, we know the kids are going to have things starting at a dollar. Okay. Okay. And there are other vendors uh, that have things that start at five. Sure. Okay. Um, we have one vendor, and you will see a photo of it in a little bit. Uh, who actually has an item for fifty-two thousand? Wow! There are. F there <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah. Um, it's an amazing piece. It though. is amazing piece, <laughs> and and many people in this town have seen it. Because uh, anyway, we'll talk about it then. But um, um, most uh, there are there are a number that are upwards two hundred to five hundred range. Sure. But I would say most everything is under seventy-five. Probably most is under fifty. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's perfect for everybody to it, be it able really to. It really is. Come. Everyone will 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 find a price point in something that they that calls to them. So you have some sponsors, and would you like to uh, share yeah. some of the sponsorships that have occurred? Yeah. So one of the things that we did that I've heard that is not done at almost there there's there's only one that we know of that does a brochure like this is we put this pamphlet together that we will give out to people coming in that will talk about the artists and it has a contact information for them. So if anybody comes to you and doesn't act on something, they'll be able to contact you later. But to, in order to do this, we ask for sponsors to, to place ads. And um, Morning Thunder Cafe was the very first one, so they got the color because we kept the cost down. Everything else is black and white. Um, and we had some other sponsors that really, really helped in this way as well. And um, our Stewart. It's really funny that our three big sponsors were coffee, wine, and cannabis. Hmm. All things that make the artist world run. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then we have some <laughs> others as well. And we'll be doing this again next year. Again, our ad costs were very low this year. Um, and we, we even offered, um, you know, business card size ads. Sure. So um, we probably will run out of these. Again, we had no idea how many to print out. How many did you print? We printed 500. Uh, which means we'll offer 250 for sure. the first 250 sure. families that sure. come in, and then we'll run out, and we'll have a better idea for next year. Very good. But we, we, uh, we're really hoping to run out. So the next thing is, is we're going to bring up a number of photographs of some of the artwork done by the artists that were probably submitted not only for this, but also so you could vet them in. Exactly. So we may not see some of these items, because they may have 
sold it since they sent sure. me the picture. Sure, yeah. but there's going to be a lot of artwork at each of the tables. Oh, they're going to be loaded. Okay, so we, if Ian could bring up that first image, what is that? These are, these are uh, containers made out of paper pulp. Wow. Paper pulp. That is really cool. They look like dragon eggs. Isn't that neat? <laughs> yeah. Okay, a beautiful purse. And what this person does is she finds old purses that are falling apart. She takes the frames and uses them and replaces the fabric. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, this woman uses um, feed sacks. She takes feed sacks from, from farmer friends and make shopping totes. Now, some people would say this is not art, but it sure fits zero waste. Sure does in every aspect since we've gone non-plastic in McMinnville. Right. These are really sturdy. And these are oversized. They're not your normal no. size and ones. And her price is real. Her price point is good. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Oh, I I I respond to this one. I, I Me too. Um she's just a tremendous woodworker. I mean, these are birdhouses and then her art um, has a lot of these layers of colored wood behind the uh, the, the cutout. And that's portraits. all reclaimed wood, you can tell. It's all reclaimed wood. That's awesome. It's all reclaimed wood, yep. Another woodworker, she does signs and different different uh, handwriting, different fonts and everything. Sure. Yeah, a number of different signs. That's awesome. Uh, one of our metal workers. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I didn't look it up. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, uh, all, all, a lot of the women who make the earrings source their materials from tin. I remember now. She gets those um, cookie tins that we see at Christmas time. Sure. Okay, so there, that explains the motif. Yep. Um, and she cuts them out. Yeah. That's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, and here we go. Kimberly. The floozy spins. Kimberly and the floozies, yes. <laughs> Ian, if you could go back, perfect. Yeah. So what is this, Kim? <laughs> Those are floozy spoons. They start out with a silver serving spoon. Just like the one yes, you have in your yes. hand. Yep. I add clay and form it into the face and then paint it and then add all kinds of they have beauty costume beauty. Judy, jewelry <laughs> and various things to floozy deck them out. them up, yes. Yeah. Very and good. they do all have a beauty mark. <laughs> <laughs> and a name. And a name. Oh, neat. Fingerless gloves made from uh, sweaters and socks and just... Anything. Anything. Awesome. Yeah. What amazing... Beautiful. Patterns and... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I remember her business name is Quirky Gnome. <laughs> it really helps. And she's got all these characters. And we posted her um, artist spotlight already, and she told the story of three of them. So if anybody goes to Facebook, to the Zero Waste McMinnville Facebook page, they can read about this character. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> um, this is one of the woodworkers. He makes musical instruments. Yeah, those are box banjos or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. This is really neat. Looks they look like, like feathers. Yep. Yeah. No, they are bicycle inner tubes. Really? Yes. Bicycle inner tubes. Those are fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And these earrings, see what I mean? Oh, we have a lot of jewelers, but so they're all different. Too. Yeah. Yeah. This one is uh, from Antlers. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Okay, and this artist, she shops Goodwill and other stores like that, and she acquires clothes that eh, they don't necessarily appeal to her, but maybe something in them does, and she takes them apart, and she puts other clothes together. That's fantastic. Yeah. This guy, is, this guy is, is neat. He actually lived in China for a while, and that's when the idea hit him that all those disposable uh, chopsticks were going to waste. And when he came back home to Oregon, he made an uh, arrangement with several Chinese restaurants in Salem, which is where he lives, and started building these. That is a beautiful basket. Wouldn't you love to have something I like do. that? I do. I want one. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, this is really neat. This woman uses vinyl flooring. <laughs> That's fantastic. Vinyl flooring. Beautiful. Yes. I, I couldn't even imagine that. 
You know, that idea would never have come no, to me. That's that's great. And the colors and the it patterns are awesome. And that's on the poster just because the colors pop so oh, well. Oh, it's so great. Yeah. Oh, this one is doing, um, <laughs> this one is maybe not art, but it's very creative. And it's somebody who uh, happens to be me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just happens to I be. I just happen to be me, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm very big on reducing food waste, so I work with very small farmers in the area, and I get their um, their surplus, the stuff that they don't sell. Sure. So while the chocolate here is from a chocolatier in Portland, uh, there's a lot of tomatoes in there. There's a lot of herbs and spices in there. Well, and my wife makes mole sauce, and she would say this is an art form. <laughs> so good. This is from Montessori. So this is showing you the type of work they're putting together even at their, their elementary students. I know. They're elementary students. So is it high fashion? No. Is it fun and funky? Yes. Oh, I can see people that would wear those. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, there's Chuck's $52,000 wonder. He uses um, band instruments that have been retired and obviously you see some watches there too and a leather other odds and ends of metal and he he builds these amazing sculptures and people can see this not only at the um fair but the festival but where is it usually no i i don't know he's taken it out of there so i don't know oh, where he, it was he might, at the senior it center. was at the senior center for quite a while and yeah. a lot of people said in fact, people told us, oh, you have to go find Chuck. So we went over to the Senior Center, and it had been taken out, but they gave us his contact info. Yeah. Next. Uh, Carla Fox makes beautiful neck pieces, and when I saw this, it screamed bride to me. Somebody getting married soon could get by with a really simple sheath dress that wouldn't cost an arm and a leg and really dress up with this neck piece. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Carla does amazing work. Petty Bellis is also at the Farmer's Market in downtown. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, 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 she's been there, so I'm assuming she'll be there again this year. She gets vintage fabrics. She'll go to yard sales. She'll go to Goodwills. And she says it doesn't matter if there's holes because she makes aprons. It's beautiful. Yeah. And this is, um, this is Marion. Um, I'm going, going to go blank on her last name, so it's Marion. Okay. Um, and she has this amazing ability to see art where I, again, look at it, it's an old camera lens case. Right. And what, fuses? Uh, uh, and some feathers. And feathers. That's and it. there you have some art. It's very cool. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. Um, origami usually uses dollar bills. This woman uh, was taught as a three-year-old to by her grandmother to keep her quiet. And recently, she has been really drawn to old maps and has been making these. I like this one. If it's available, I'm going to get it because I'm from New Jersey and it, this awesome. can go on my Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> and we have one of our other metal, metal workers makes yep. little critters. Yep. Um, he's got all kinds of critters, different okay. sizes. Uh, th this woman takes plastic bags and she makes baskets. She also does other artwork with it. Um, Fantastic. Good use of yeah. stuff that used to be in the sure, landfill. Sure. Or other people put in the landfill. Um, this artist makes refillable notepads. So inside are blank pieces of paper, and she gets the, the pictures that she puts on the covers from various sources sure. um, and puts it all together. And she's been around for a while. She was at the crafts fair that we were at. Um, <laughs> Now, again, this was a real decision for our, for our, um, our committee because, again, it's not art. But what this woman does is find beat up, rusty old um, cast iron at yard sales or anywhere, and she cleans them and refurbishes they them. They look brand new. They do look brand new. And if you have not cooked with cast iron, it's something to really learn. It's an amazing oh, tool. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so she does good work and again it's it's by refurbishing it she's giving it new life right and and it's getting reused um, a woman 
also applied towards the end of the application period. It was really lucky that we still had space. Um, she was visiting her daughter up in Alaska, and there was a delay on flying out because of weather. Uh, so she was walking the beach. Now, we're talking up really high north. Uh, she, I don't know exactly where, but she said where the Yukon River came out. When the gold uh, miners were searching, they had bottles, glass bottles. They didn't have plastic then. Right. <laughs> and they would just throw it in the river and it would wash out to sea. Sure. And now they're washing back as sea glass. Awesome. And so she's making Tess Matos. I don't know why I remember some names better than others, but she, um, she does volunteer work at Scrap and she also teaches knitting or, or some, some fabric work there. Um, and she will take the skeins that show up uh, measure them to see if they're good and if they're too short she combines them by knotting them I don't really know until I see it they're all different textures and you can buy high-end skeins like that sure for I've seen sweaters 50 made out to a hundred dollars yeah. uh, her prices are not that high awesome um, and it's amazing yeah ah uh, Valerie Valerie has an eye uh, again I can't if I had any one of those pieces, I never would have produced something sure. as dramatic as that. This one makes bags, just like the other one, but the materials are different. She gets street banners. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to have a street banner. Right. And I'm hoping I can connect with her to give her our street banner and I can get a bag back. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this happens to be my husband, so I can talk about it easily. Um, have you ever gone to a party where you have a plate of food and a glass of something to drink, but you can't... Consume either. Well, you can drink, <laughs> but you can't eat yeah. easily. So um, Graham developed this. He's a woodworker. He developed this, and you slide your, your glass in, into that hole, and it won't jiggle out because of that, that turn. Right. And then you can hold it with your thumb through another hole, and you can actually use your hand free to eat. Consumption. Yeah. So we're way over time. So <gasps> thank you both for being on. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Very much. Thank you, Howie. And thank you for watching today.